Elon. How was your weekend? Um, Juliet, how was your weekend? Okay. Um, that's fine. I, I don't know if you can hear me, but if you can, I expect you to respond to any Mary call I make. Oh, I hear you well. Mary Kane was good. How about you? Uh, very stressful. I mean, as usual, but it's it's all Sorry. Good. It's part of the teaching or we can do more. Than that. Okay, so uh, welcome to. I think there's a third session, right? Third session for the business finance class. Now we are going. to look at the towel and the that to you. And so we're going to um, use the, 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 the video line is unstable, so if you could check it for us, please. The standing of the key concepts that we had in Um, is that, hello. The line is your line is breaking. You see the line is hello. Hello, sir. Don't worry, I'm, I'm coming in now. I want to switch to another net. Okay, can you hear me now? Is it better? Alfred, is it better now? Yes, yes, it's okay now. Okay. Um, what I'm trying to do is to yeah, switch to another network. All right, so like I said, we, we are going to do what we call um, cost capital, okay? And from our business, please can you make the new Benzafo uh, host? So that I Godfrey, there is a new Ben Safo that has joined. Let's make that one. Yes, please. Please have a few minutes. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so let me share the screen and then we can. No, there is there is a new one, Ben Safo. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Um, I've not been made the host. I think. Uh, Please, is it Ben Safo? Because it's only one Ben Safo that I'm seeing. Yes, Ben Safo. Wow. I'm unable to share the screen because you have disabled participants. Check, check, check to see. If you have muted everybody, I'm the only one speaking, so you should, you should see. Because the Ben Safo that I'm seeing is the host. Uh, 
what I'm trying to say is that, let me see, hold on. No, it's still not happening. It's not, it's not in here. Wow. Host disabled. You are now host. Okay, I think I've seen you are now host. All right. Okay, now I can, I can do that. All right. Please, okay. Sir. Good. So I have sent a document to you, a, P, a PPT document. Um, have you shared with it with everybody? Yes, please. Sir. I've shared it on the WhatsApp platforms. Okay, that's fine. So we are going to use that today to deal with some issues in there. Okay, there's no problem. We, we will finish just in time. Okay, so what we are going to do today is to look at the cost of capital. Okay, the cost of capital. Okay. Cost of capital. Now, in business finance one, we dealt with issues of capital. And we said that here we are looking at the sources of funds for an organization. So if an organization needs money to run their business, then they are going to get this money from two broad sources, right? Now, who can tell me the two broad sources that we can acquire capital? In my class, I told you, you cannot forget this. Sources of finance. Yes. The internal source and external source. Yes, that, that yes, is one that, classification. That is one classification. Right. But I'm looking at the, the two you know, broad sources of finance. You know, yes, we have internal and external sources. And that's, that's one classification, how you can classify them. But two sources of finance. If you need money, where do you go to? So is it that I believe you at that one? No. Debt and equity. Debt and Debt equity. And equity. Good. You need two sources, equity and debt. And we have discussed in previous studies that this, this equity is where we are talking about shares, okay? Raising money from shareholders, issuing new shares, issuing new shares to existing shareholders, which we call right issue, okay? And then the retained earnings and all that. Those, those are part of equity. Now, when we talk about debt, we are talking about acquisition of loans. I, I, mean, I mean, raising money from loans, preference shares, okay, preference shares, debentures, bonds, and all that, okay? Please, are you okay? Remember these things. Yeah. Now, because we are going to acquire these funds, it comes at, at a cost. Remember, for example, if you take a loan, they will tell you maybe you need a loan of 100,000 cities. Okay, they will tell you that the loan attracts an interest of say 10%. Please, I get to the point. That means that every year you pay how much? 10,000 cities, is that not so? Now, this 10%, uh, you know, loan is part of debt, right? It's what we call cost of debt of the loan, okay? The cost of debt for the loan. Equally, if it is a preference share or a bond, there will be a rate on it. And that is also going to be a cost of the, 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 the bond or what, whatever, bond, cost of bond. So if, if you are issuing a bond and the coupon rate is 10% per annum, then the cost of the, the bond is the 10%, okay? So we can have loan at a cost, bond at a cost, let's say 12%, preference shares at a cost, let's say 11% and all that. Now, when we, we do something to this and get what we call total cost of debt, here we are, our only focus is on debt. Can you see that? It's loan, bond, preference shares, so it's debt. Similarly, if, if we are looking at equity, Okay. Insofar as shareholders give money to the organization, they expect something in return. And whatever they, they expect in return is a cost to the organization. So there is a cost to equity. 
So if you are able to determine what the cost of equity is, okay, and what our cost of debt is, then we can be able to determine what we call our cost of capital. Okay, the total cost of capital. And we will use something we call the weighted cost of capital. We weigh, we weigh these two, add them together, and then we will get a weighted cost of capital. Please, I get to the point. So our cost of capital is simply looking at it from these three perspectives. Number one is the cost of equity, which is one source of finance. Equity is one source of finance, the cost associated with it. Then we look at cost of debt, which is when you are raising money from the debt side, the cost that is associated. And then because we can also acquire from both sources, we will look at a weighted cost of capital coming from those two um, sources. All right. So that's what we are going to do for today and tomorrow. And here we will need to pay attention here. So let's start with cost of equity. Can you see that when we were doing time value of money, we were using an R. Let's see, we tell you, you have 5,000 CDs today. You want it to be 8,000 CDs for in the next 10 years. What will be the N? What will be the R? What will be those things? This R, okay? If it is the shareholder's point of view that we are analyzing, then this R is what we call the cost of equity. Okay, it is a cost of it's, it's an interest that you, you you want to have by providing money to the organization. It is a return. We call it the return. Okay, the rate of return. That is what we are going to determine. Okay, we are going to determine if it is shareholders, but if it is bondholders, if it is um, how do you call it um, acquisition from loans, the interest that we have to pay to the loans. It's an R. We have to determine that, and then. When we are done with cost of equity and cost of debt, we can combine the two and determine what we call the weighted cost of capital. Please, is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Right. So, yes, sir. so we have cost of equity. That's what we are going to start with. Now, when you talk about cost of equity, it is simply the cost to a company. Okay of providing equity holders with the returns that they expect from their investments. So I buy shares from MTN. I expect that, what, when you buy shares, what do you expect? Yes, what do you expect? Dividend. You expect dividend. one dividend, okay? Dividend. Some of you, you have done this before. And then two, you expect what? Apart from the dividend, what else do you expect? Okay, so, one reason why people buy um, shares from companies is yes, dividend. They expect that every period at some, every year or so, they will give them some something called dividend, a part of the profit. Now, the other thing is that they expect something we call what? Capital gain. Capital gain. And let me explain the capital gain to you. What capital gain simply means is that Today, if I buy a share from MTN Ghana at one Ghana SIM, okay, I'm expecting that maybe in five years' time, the value of that share will be two Ghana cities, in which case I have made a gain on the shares that I have bought. Please do you understand. So you buy in 2010, the share price is one CD. In 2021, the share price is five Ghana cities. How much capital gain have you made? Because you can sell, what it means that you can sell that share at five CDs today, even though you bought it at one CD. What is the capital gain that you have made on this particular share? Four CDs. Exactly, four CDs. Is it clear? Is, it, is everybody okay? Yes, yeah. sir. Good. So anytime you buy a share, these are the two returns that you will get. Number one is dividend, and number two is capital gain. Now, these are all, I mean, in fact, the dividend part is a cost to the organization because if the organization runs its operations and gets profit, it must use some part of that profit to pay this dividend. 
Please, are you getting the point? And it is a cost. Sometimes it is not quoted as we quote in loans and all that. So you may not feel it. And that's what we are trying to determine today. And we will employ the concept of time value of money in dealing with all of these issues. Okay, so I'm, I'll break the, the, the topic down into principles. So we pick principle one, we apply something from time value of money, you know, with the concepts that you have gained in time value of money, you'll be able to solve even without me saying anything. You'll be able to determine the R, okay? So anytime you buy shares, they, you, you expect to um, uh, cash flows and the cash flows will come in the form of dividend or what? Capital gain, put that at the back of your mind. All right. Now, in determining the, 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 the value of any security, so you want to buy a share today, you want to determine how much you should pay for that security today, how much it should cost today. Remember, that means that you are doing something present, right? If you want to determine the, the price you have to pay a security, let's say P0 is the price we are paying today for a security. If you want to determine that, you look at all the cash flows that is associated with that particular security and discount them to the present. So let's say that in year one, you will get dividend, okay? So we discount. Please, I get to the point. In year two, we get another dividend. We will discount and so on and so forth up to the end fear, okay? This is dividend in the end fear. Please, have you seen that? We have discounted all the dividend. But beyond that, what else do we get if at the end of the end year we want to sell? We will get what we call the what? The new price, right? Price N. We will get, so if we buy it at one CD, you want to sell at five CD. Five CD is a cash flow. The whole five CD is the cash flow that is coming to you. And you have to discount that one too, okay? One plus R raised to the power N. So, so this is how we determine the, the price of any security any security. So assuming D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, up to Dn are the same throughout the period, then it forms an annuity. Can you see that? If, for example, dividend one is 50, dividend two is 50, dividend three is 50, dividend four is 50, every year you are getting 50 cities. It means it is an annuity. So you can put all of this into an annuity and then you do plus Pn over one plus R. We will take examples so you will see how it works. Okay. But the whole, the bottom line is that in determining the price of any security, be it a share or a bond, all that you have to do is to find all the possible things you will get, the cash flows that you will get. So if it is a share, it is dividend and the price at which you will sell the, dividend, uh, the share in future. Discount all of them to the present. Because I get in the point. Now, if it is a bond, for bond, you receive a constant payment called coupon over the life of the, the bond. And then at the end of the period, they return your money back to you. So you can use annuity and then plus PN. All right. we'll, we'll get into all of those things. But just note that anytime you're determining the price of any security, you use all the, you discount all the future cash flows to present. And that will tell you how much you should pay for the security. Okay. Okay. So let's move ahead and try to determine um, the cost of equity, okay? We are determining an R. Here we are calling cost of equity. So, so you see that because this is equity, we are dealing with shares, okay? We're dealing with shares, equity. All right. Now, to be able to determine the cost of equity, we will need two approaches. We can use two approaches to determine the cost of what? Equity, two approaches. The first one is what? The Gordon's valuation model. Valuation model. Gordon's valuation model. Okay. So, Approach it in the using determining what cost of equity, which is the return that shareholders want. Okay, the approaches that we can use is number one, Gordon's valuation 
model. And then number two is what we call capital assets pricing pricing model. And we call that cap. So these are the two main approaches that you use to be able to determine the cost of equity. Okay. So we pick one, we take the Gordon's growth model, look at all the issues in there. And then when we are done, we can take CAPM and deal with the issues in there. And CAPM is very, very important. It's a very, very, it's a one factor model, but it's very, very, very important. We will look into it when we get there. Okay. But just know that there are two approaches, broad approaches, the Gordon's valuation model. Okay. Sometimes they call it the Gordon's growth model, whatever, but the Gordon's valuation model and then we have the capital asset pricing model. These are the two broad approaches that we are going to use. So straight away, we will go into the Gordon's valuation model. Okay. Now, the Gordon's um, valuation model is what I've talked about um, not long ago. You know, what, what the Gordon valuation model seeks to do is that it tells you that the value of every security, mm, the value of every security, be it a bond or a share, the price that you pay for it, the value, okay, is always equal to the future expected cash flows from that particular security, okay, discounted at that particular rate of return. So if you are Okay, in the future, a higher price in the future. This, these are the two things that you get. Now, if we determine all the future dividends and we discount them, okay, if we discount the future dividends and then discount the future price and add the two, then that should be the price of that security. So we look at all the expected future cash flows then discount them to the, uh, the present, okay? And you do that discounting with something we call an R. And that R is what we call the rate of return. So if you are dealing with shares, then it is the shareholder's rate of return. If you are dealing with um, debt holders, then it is the debt holder rate of return. Please, I get to the point. So that is, simply, that is simply that. And a lot of assumptions are made under this goddess growth model. Valuation model. Okay. What is valuation model? Number one is that I, I hope you are making some notes. Uh, maybe when you school resumes, they will give you the slides and you'll be able to play around it. I'm sure some of you even have it, right? is
when people introduce our cell has been disconnected. Um, sorry, I, I don't know. I think the network. I don't know if if it was my at my end or it was at your end. Um, Godfrey, please make me an admin. Eh? It's still not showing. Hello, have you made me an admin? Yes, please, uh, one admin. Okay. Okay. So we're, we're looking at the assumptions underlying the uh, underlying the Gordon valuation model, okay? All right, and we said that number one is that growth is at a constant rate. Growth is at a constant rate. Okay, you can make some are rational we assume that everybody buying the share is rational okay and therefore they will they are likely to make sound decisions okay so investors are rational number three is that growth okay growth is always lower than the the personal discount rates are so what we are saying is that growth is always less than R. And we will see why. We will see why when we get to the, the principles that I'm talking about. Okay. Now we also assume that the shareholder is an is in an no, the shareholders are in a competitive market. Okay. There's competition. Shareholders are in a competitive market. Okay. Shareholders are in a competitive market. Okay, that, that's okay, that, 
I mean, there are others, but this is okay. So in determining, in determining the, the, the rate that is required by the shareholder, the rate of return that the shareholder expects, I've classified how we go about it into principles, okay? So we will look at principle one, principle two, principle three, principle four. So if they are going to give you an A, the principles. So you read the question and then you know that, oh, okay, this is the principle that I have to apply. Please, is that, is that okay? Okay. So the first principle that we are going to talk about is where dividends are constants. You can open, there's um, a PDF that, sorry, a PowerPoint file that I sent to you. You can open it and then we'll be, we'll be looking at it as, as we move along. Okay. So where dividends are constant. So principle one. Where dividends are constant. So write this in your book and then we'll look at what it is. Now, <clears throat> forget about what I've written. If I say that you are going to receive 500 cities every year forever, which area have we entered into? Time value of money, bring that concept here. If I'm going to give you 500 cities every year forever, where have we Perpetuity. entered? Perpetuity. Yes, I need more answers. Perpetuity. Oh, be, Perpetuity, right. Perpetuity. Okay, and what is the formula for perpetuity? If you want to determine the present value of a perpetuity, what do you do? You say it's equal to what? P over R. P is, P is equal to C equal over to what? R. C over R. And what is this C? This, we said this C is what? The cash flow. The, the cash, cash flow. flow. The cash flow. Oh. Okay, that's what you are going to receive over the And this P we said is what? Present value. Remember? Yes, it is the present value, but we termed it as either the price or, or cost of the particular asset. And this is the rate of the return. So we are trying to determine an R if some, something like this is given to us. And, and I know it's simple, right? This is quite simple. Okay, so this is the price of the share. And we are saying that we will give you a dividend. The dividend is also a C, it's a cash flow. A dividend forever. Okay, dividend of 20 cities forever. So if you buy the share, we are saying that we give you 20 cities forever. Determine the price of the security if R is equal to, or determine the rate of return for the, for the shareholders. I think you will be able to deal with those issues. Okay, so um, simply here, we are assuming that there is no growth, okay? At this stage, we are assuming that there is no growth. That's principle one. We, we are only assuming that um, there is a constant cash flow forever. So we open the, 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 the file that I sent to you, and then let's take a question there and then we will solve. Okay, we want to determine either the price of a security. So it's the same thing. We can give you dividend and price and tell you to find the R, which is the cost of equity. Or, so this R is the cost of equity, right? This is what we call the cost of equity. This is the return that they, they expect. Okay, and this is the price. This is the cash flow. So we can give you a new two and tell you to find the other. Chris, is that okay? Is that okay? Hello? Yes, sir. Good. Yes. Okay. So have you opened the, the, the slide that I gave you? Or oh, you have not received it? We no. have. Okay. So open it. You can open it. Either on your laptop or on your phone. Now everybody has a laptop or, or a phone, or at least one of them. Some people have five phones. Those of you who have five phones, what are you using them for? Who carries them for you? Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you see the principles are there.
Okay. So let's look at question one. Okay. And we know the, the, the formula that we use when we have some of these questions. So company X has just declared and paid dividend of 120 CDs per share. Okay. They have declared and paid. So that is the current dividend, right? And in finance, we call that one D naught. Okay. We, we use this symbol to represent it. If it is what they have paid today, that's the current dividend. We, we classify it like this, D naught. So you see that one is current dividend. Okay, current dividend. D one is dividend for next year. Next year, okay. This is how you get to the point. Note it, we'll be using it. Okay, right. So you have paid 120 CDs per share. And this is expected to remain at this level into the foreseeable future. So where have we entered into? Perpetuity. Perpetuity. We are going into the foreseeable future. Perpetuity. If you can buy a share at 1,800 cities today, what is that? What is that? 1,800. What is it? Present value. It's the price of the share. P not, right? P. Is I get to the point? then what is your expected return? So, so simply, this is what we are going to do. In the question, they have given us a dividend. D not is equal to 120. They have given us P, right, of 1,800. We usually say P not, that's the price today. Okay, dividend today, P not, price today, P not. And they are asking us, what is the expected return? So what are we going to find? What are we going to find? R. Good. We are going to find R. So if you are giving D, P, and, and you're asked to find R, you simply, because this is going into the foreseeable future, there is no end. So you simply say that P not is equal to D not over R, which is the same perpetuity formula, except that now we want to tell that this is dividend. Please, are you getting the point? The cash flow. We have classified the particular cash flow we are talking about as dividend. Okay, so solve it and give me the answer. Find R and give me the answer. Quickly, please put your calculators close to you. And this then... one is seven percent. Who is speaking? Who is speaking? Hey, it's me. Ah, who are you? Frank Wood. Aha, uh -huh, Frank Wood. 6.67%. Who says he had 6.67%? Any other answer? I had If you had the same answer, just me. What is it? 6.67%. 6 okay. So that tells you that that is the required rate of return for that particular shareholder. So it, let's say that that shareholder is giving, we are assuming, okay, literally, I mean, I don't mean to say that, but let's say that the, the shareholder's money that is given to the, the, the company, okay, okay, is going to earn him 6.67%. I, if he was a bank, he is, expect, he is expecting 6.67% 6 as what? As the interest. Please, are you getting the point? That's how you have to look at it from. I am a shareholder. I'm giving my money for you to run the organization. This is how much I expect you to pay me every year. The rate of return is 6.67%. Are you getting the point? Yes, sir. Sir, please come again. <laughs> okay, so what we are simply saying is that I'm going to buy a share at 1,800 cities today, okay? And then you have promised to give me 120 CDs every year forever. Okay, so we are trying to determine what return I'll be getting. What is the return on my investment? Please, are you getting the point? What are you going to give to me as a form of a percentage? Okay, and we are saying that that is simply using the uh, perpetuity formula because it is going on forever. We did that and had 6.67%. So that 6.67 is the return that the shareholders expect to be given every year. Here we are talking about percentages. This is money. Okay, so okay, you simply do 0 
with six six point six seven as a percentage of um, of of thousand eight hundred and C. Okay, then you see that you are getting one twenty CDs every year. Please, are you getting a point? So if I say every year, I'll give you six point six seven percent. I can ask you, how much am I going to give you every year? Did you do that? Have you done zero point zero six six seven times thousand eight hundred? What did you get? One twenty. Exactly. You see, you are getting one twenty. Uh huh. So it means that every year they will give you six point six seven percent on your investment. That's what is going to give you the one twenty cities. That is money. It is just like if I have given you a loan of thousand eight hundred, and I say that. Every year, pay me 120 CDs, 120 CDs forever. Then what I'm literally telling you is that pay me 6.67 of, of, of the loan every year. Please, are, are you getting the point? So that is the R. That's, this, is what we, this R is what we call the cost of equity. It is the return that the, the, shareholders, the, the shareholders are expecting from their investment. Okay? That is very, very, know that that is one way we can determine the R. Okay? In, in that particular, do we have another question on that? Yes, there is a question too, right? Principle one. Okay. Can you all see it? That there is a, another question on principle one. All right. So, so, yes, go ahead. Sir, um, please, are we doing bond valuation or stock valuation? We, we said we are oh. dealing with cost of equity. So when you talk about equity, where are we headed? You think it's share or bond? Cost of equity. Um, shares. So it's a stock valuation. Okay. Yes, that is why we are we are seeing dividend, 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 dividend. Okay. Now, okay. in determining in determining the price of a share, we say that we are valuing that share. That's stock valuation. That's why we did the we are dealing with the Gordon valuation model, the Gordon valuation of shares how God, God in things shares should be valued, okay? And there are principles. It comes in different, different, different forms. Here, we are saying that if the share is going to pay you a dividend of X amount forever, okay, then you should be able to determine its price if you know the R, okay? If you don't know the R, then the price and the dividend will be given and then you'll be able to determine that R, the rate of, the rate of return. Are you getting that point? So there's two ways. Now let's look at, Let's look at the second question. That will answer your question very well. Investors require 15% on company excess shares. Now, what is that 15%? That's R. That is the R, which, is, which we are calling, because we are dealing with shares here, we're calling what? Cost of equity. Please get, okay. you get the point. Good. That's what, what equity, because we are dealing with shares. If it were to be a bond, then we call it cost of debt. It's the same R, but here we are calling it cost of equity. Okay. If it is a bond, we will call it cost of debt. Please, are you getting the point? Yes, sir. Good. Now, the company has just paid a dividend of 90 CDs per share. Is it D1 or D0? D0. 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 The dividend they have paid today, okay, 90 per share. And this will remain constant forever. So where have we entered into? Perpetuity forever. It is the, see, is it? It is the dividend that is going to remain constant forever. So we are going into and uh, perpetuity. We said perpetuity is when you are receiving a constant sum of money forever. Please, are you getting the point? So perpetuity. How much will you be willing to pay for the share today? So here we are going to determine the price of what the share. Please, are you getting the point? We are determining the price of the share. So simply, we use the same formula. This time they have given us T or what we call D naught, and then they have given us R. So determining the price should not be a problem. Right, determine the price and tell me. 600. 600. You had what? 600. 600. 600. Um, yes. I, I got a different answer. Um, um, let me see. Anita, your hand is up. Anita, Anita Menu, 
So please, I ask the question about whether it is um, bond valuation. Oh, okay, or... okay, okay. So now, what answer did you get, Anita? So I have six hundred. Six hundred. Can you walk us through how you got your six hundred? Yes. Okay. So, um, we are finding the price of we are finding P naught. So P naught is equal to good. Mm -hmm. The divide the D naught, which is um. The D not over R and the R was 15%. Of. So the question again. You have the slides. That's why I shared it in advance. Yeah. Okay. I, I am yeah. switching from the question and all that. Okay. So, uh -huh. so the, the the R was 15% and the D not was nine 90 Ghana per share. Okay, so, so it's 90 it's, over 15. Uh, 0. 0, 0. 0.15. 0.15. That is yeah. equal to. 600. 600. So that is the, the value you should pay for the share today. That is the price of the share today. Please, are you getting the point? Yes. P naught is equal to 600 cities. So here, what have we determined? We have determined the value of a share. We have determined the price of a share. So that's what we call stock valuation, share valuation. And that's it. We are yes. valuing the share. Uh -huh. And it will come in different scenarios. This is one example of how it can come. Please, are you getting the point? All right. Now, hello, please, did you, did you get what I said? Yes, please. And you understand? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Let's go to principle two. So that's how principle one will come. And this one, even in your, uh, your exams last semester, we deliberately put something in there for you to be able to solve. And we have done that again in this tutorial sessions okay now principle two i in a different way that the question can come okay principle two here we are looking at where dividends grow so the dividend is not going to be constant forever but it will be growing at a constant rate okay so where dividends grow at a constant constant rates you can write that down and then so we are, we are dealing with the principles okay where the dividends grew but then um at a constant rate so here the dividend will grow but because the growth is constant we can apply an, a perpetuity and then deal with the growth issues there okay we can apply perpetuity and deal with the growth issues there. And so that one, this is how we, we, we go about it. Anytime you are receiving dividends, okay, and we say that the dividend will grow constantly forever. It's still forever. So we, there is annuity, uh, sorry, perpetuity in there. But because there is growth, we have to deal with the issues of growth. In that case, what we do is that P naught will be equal to D naught one plus G all over R minus G. Remember that in our, in our um, assumptions, we said that every time R should be greater than G, okay? Your, your rate of return should be greater than the growth. Then that the price will be negative. Can you see that? If this is two and this is three, uh, if the, the down part, this is two and this is three, you realize that the P naught will be negative because you get negative one here, okay? And we don't want that to, to happen so anytime there is um r and g your r should be greater than the g okay okay this eraser anytime i click on the eraser i don't know how to go back what do i do I click on it again and it doesn't. Okay, please, are you okay with this formula? Hello, are you okay with the formula? So we are simply saying that, what we are simply saying is that, now, if, if you grow the dividend for one year, that is the growth there, because the, the, the power in the growth, um, the bracket is just one, right? Can you see that? 
Good. The power here is just one. Can you see that? So if you grow it for one year and do R minus G, then you are going to get the price. So what is what can you say about D naught one plus G? Is the same as what? If the dividend today, when you grow it for one year, what, what will be that dividend? D1. Hello? D1, good. You see that this is the dividend for next year. Because D0 is the dividend today. So if you say it, let's say the dividend D0, dividend today is 100 cities. And we say that growth is 10%. Okay. Now, growth means that each year the dividend will grow. That is different from your R. This is what you require in return for the money you have given to the organization. But this is how the progression of the dividend. Are we making progress in terms of dividend payment? That is the 10%. What will be your growth, your dividend next year? Your dividend next year is going to be what? 100, one plus 0 0.1, right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. That is what you're going to give you 110. So anytime the question tells you that dividend for next year is 100 CDs, you cannot do, if this is, D not one plus G all over R minus G. If the question says that dividend for next year is 10,000 cities, whatever, all you have to do is to do D one over R minus G. Can you see that? Can you see that? But if they give you the dividend today, then you have to grow it. Is I getting the point? They will give you a growth rate. Anytime you see a growth rate in the question, okay? And it is forever. You are going, it's going on forever. And the dividend they gave you in the question is D naught. Then first you have to go about by, by this. But if it is dividend for next year, then simply pick that figure and do R minus G. Are we clear? Are we clear? Because D1 is yes. equal to D naught one plus G. You know, this is time value of money. When you are going for just one year, that is time value of money. Okay. Please, are you okay with the formulas? Any question here? Any question here? Here, our G is growth. G is the growth rate. And here we are talking about forever, growth rate forever. Okay, P naught is our price, the price of the share. D naught is the dividend you just paid or dividend today. And then D one plus G or what we call D one is the next year's dividend. Please are you okay? D one is next year's dividend. This one is next year. Can you go over it again? You want to? Hello, sir. Yes. Which part don't you understand? Then I can take it from you. Yes, yeah, somebody called. Go ahead. When do we use D1 over R minus G? Now, what is D1? What did I say D1 is? Dividend for next year. Good. So in the question, they can tell you that dividend for next year is projected at five Ghana cities. The growth rate is 10%. Investors require 12%. So in that case, you, you cannot grow that next year uh, dividend again. You simply pick that, this one. But if they give you D not in the question, which we are going to see example now, then because it is this year, we want to grow it one year before we look at R minus G. Okay, so you only use D1 when the next year dividend is given in the question. Okay, please. Uh -huh. You use D not if the current dividend is given, this year's dividend is given, and you would want to look at what will happen next year, and therefore you have to grow it by one, one more year. Is that again? Yes, please, thank you. You're welcome. Any, any other question here? Uh, hey, we can, yes, go ahead. So whether D not or D1 doesn't change the fact that it's a perpetuity. Yes, it doesn't change the fact that it's a perpetuity. <laughs> because, because they will tell you that it is going on forever. Please, I get to the point. It's going on forever. If it is going on forever, we don't have any end. Well, if I ask you what is the last year that will happen in this world, you can't tell me. Are you getting the point? And so we have to go by the perpetuity formula, which has no end in it and adjust with the growth issues. Please, are you getting the point? Yes, please. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right. Okay. 
So let's let's go to uh, um, our slides and look at questions relating to um, questions relating to principle principle two, right? Principle two. It's Lane here. Charlene, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Ah, which name are you using so that I'll be calling you? I'm using Charlene. See, and I don't see it. Okay. So anytime you see a question with Lynn, it means that I set that question. Okay. And Lynn is my girlfriend then. Please, nobody should come and beat me here. Lynn, is, is, is there any problem with that? Say that no. Is, there's no problem. Good. Thank you. Uh, Dear, my dear friends, she is taking. Thank you. All right, let's get back to um, mm -hmm. class. Now, Lane Limited has just paid a dividend of 140 CDs per share. That 140 is what? Give me the variable, the name of that variable. Yes, Lane Limited has just paid a dividend. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good. You see how you identify the issues in there. And this is expected to grow at 12% per annum forever. So you see that forever has come in here. So your mind is going to perpetuity number one. You know it is D0, and there, there has been a growth rate that has been given. Please, are you getting the point? Yes, sir. Good. Now, if you buy a share at 2,200 Ghana cities today, now, what is that 2,200? Peanuts. Peanuts. Peanuts or price. Are you getting the point? What will yes, be sir. your expected return? What will be your expected return? So what are we looking for? We are looking R. for the R. R, good. Here, we are dealing with shares. And so that R is called what? Cost of equity. Please, are you getting the point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is an R. It is an R relating to shares. That is all what we call cost of equity. Okay, so let's go and solve this question. Okay, let's go and solve this question. I will open my um, whiteboard here. Okay, so we have been. Is it D not or D one? D not as yeah, 140. Good. G as what? 12%. And they are telling us to find what? R. So if you're able to write this alone, it tell it gives you an idea which formula to use. Is that okay? Is that okay? So simply yeah, we can say P not is equal to because this is D not. Is D not one plus G all over R minus G. Now, you can make R the subject in this, um, how do you call it, this equation, okay? And then you can, or simply, because this is a number, this is a number, this is a number, this is a number, this is a number. You can put them in and then, um, and then find R. Okay, so put it in and tell me what the answer is. Please solve, right? Okay, let's solve together. Let's solve together, okay? Now, so it's going to be 2,200 uh -huh, is equal to um, Paulina. Paulina, uh -huh, it's equal to, yes. 140. Paulina Dachimo, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. 140. 140. Into Good. bracket. Uh -huh. One plus. The rate was uh, the, the growth rate was what? Twelve percent. Okay, so it's one zero point one two, like this, right? Uh huh. Yes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Touch more. Hold on. Uh, let me call. Um, Ami. 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 Yeah. Hello. Yes, Ami. Okay. Yes. All over. Yes. 
All of us are minus 0 0.12. One, two. Okay. So that's a simple. Now, it's still going to be 2,000. Sorry. 2,200 is equal to. Um, Steve, there is another E. Steve e or Steve? Whatever the case is, you are a co-host, right? Steve. Hey, co-host. You have not eaten or what? Esther. Esther. Yes, please. Point to the first, the top, the, the numerator for us. Numerator. Should I add all of them? I had 156.8. All over R minus zero point one. Come again, one five six point eight. Point eight over, All over R minus R minus zero point one two. Uh -huh. Now, see, I could have given you a formula just to find the R when it's, this is happening, but I don't want to give you a lot of formulas. All you have to do is to make R the subject. Just solve for R. Yes. From here, what do you do? You do cross multiplication. Is that not so? Yes. Uh -huh. And do all those things. And give me the R. R is equal to what? Um, um, let me see. Oh, Charlene, I've seen your name. I said, Shaho, baby. Jemfua. 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 Just participate, okay? If you get the answer wrong, there's no problem. Just, just... Say something, okay? Let's say something. There's info. We have to deal with the four principles today, so speed up. This this is no problem. If the info is not ready with um, an answer, then Godwin Elom Agbeve. This is the second time I've called Godwin. I'm I'm the host. If you are uh, doing something as I remove you, when you come back, you add yourself. Hey. Uh -huh. This one you talk. Yes, go ahead. What is R? Now, hold on, hold on, um, hold on, um, Godwin. Generally, I'm asking a general question. Right. Now, the R we are going to get, is it going to be greater than 12 or less than 12? Greater than 12. Greater than 12. Good. So, anytime you are solving and then you see G12, G as 12%. And you're asked to find R, then you know that R should be bigger than 12%. So if you get something smaller, then you have to go back to your calculations and see if something is wrong. Okay, Elon, let's go ahead. What do you get? Uh, sir, I don't have the calculator yet. Please go outside, go and find the calculator, buy and come and answer the question quickly. Hurry up. <laughs> yes, sir. <Hiram. laughs> you can't be in this class without a calculator. I mean, no, hey, Ram. Hey, Ram. Okay, I'm going to remove Aram because Aram is not present. Where's the remove? Remove. Um, yeah, Jonathan, you are here. What's what's the R? Jonathan. The bizarre is zero. I had zero point one nine. That's nineteen. Nineteen percent. 19 point what? One, two, one, three. One, three. One, three. One, three. Yeah. So that is, that is if you are leaving it in percentages, it becomes what? 19.13%. Are you getting the point? Yes, sir. Are you okay? Okay, yes. let's go and pick the, the second question in that. Any question on this? Any question? Any question? Just feel free. Any, ask any question, and we'll be, we'll, be, we'll be good to answer you. All right. Now let's go back to the the slides to find one more question to solve. All right. Now question two. Look at question two. It says, "Company Y is projected to pay the dividend of 110 cities per share next year." That 110. What is it? D one. D1. D1. Why? Because D1. it's the dividend for year one. Next year. Please, I get in the point. Yeah. So, yeah. so it has been, it, there, there has, the growth has taken place already. That's why we are getting 
the 110, okay? And this is expected to grow at 6% per annum forever. So there is forever there, there is G there, and we have been given D1, okay? The, the company's shares are currently quoted at 800 CDs per share. What is that figure? What does it represent? Peanut. Peanut price, Peanut. The, the value of the shares. And so they are asking us to calculate the cost of equity. What are we asked to calculate? The R. R. Are we all following? Are we all following? Yes. Okay. yes. Good. And so in that situation, P not is equal to which formula? We have been given D1. So R minus G. That is all. D1, R minus G. Okay, because nowhere will you find D naught, and there's no way you would have to go back, find D naught, and then come and find D1. No, once D1 is given, use D1 over R minus G. Okay, so what, what was the price you're giving in the question? P naught is equal to 800, D1 is equal to 110, G is equal to what? 6%, 0 0.06. Please, I get in the point. Given this, we can simply say that, okay, 800 is equal to 110 all over R minus G. Oh, sorry, we know G. We know G to be 0 0.06. Okay, find R and tell me. But again, is R going to be more than 6% or less than 6%? Uh, Yes, make 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 it the subject. Okay, it's nineteen twenty seven five. What? Zero point one nine seven five. Nineteen point seven five percent. Okay. Now you can use this formula. Can simply use this formula, okay? R is equal to D1 over P naught plus G. If you make it the subject, that's what you get. If you if you make if you make R the subject of of this formula, this one, that's what you will get, okay? You get D1 over P naught plus G, okay? The G is not part of the fraction; it's standing on this, okay? So you can write it somewhere just in case. But remember, if if they give you um, D not, then you have to make this one D not one plus G, okay? Uh -huh, before you can proceed. Okay. So so that is that. Please, are you getting the point? Okay, you can simply say R is equal to D1 over P not plus G. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. If 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 you make P not in the first equation, that's what you get. So if you don't want any trouble, just take to one. And then you can determine any of the variables. Of course, if they give you D naught, it becomes D naught one plus G all over P naught plus G. Okay, so there's no problem with that. Okay. Now I want you to try the third question and then give me the answer. But before that, um, let's try to identify the issues in there. And then now investors expect a return of 18% per annum on the shares of company B. What, what does that 80% represent? Cost of equity. R. R, cost of equity. Are you following what we are doing? No. That's very important. The thing is not on the screen. Oh, you, have, you are not seeing it on the screen? Chumasi, speak. Yeah, sorry. Um, the question two, principle two, the question two, please, what was the yes. final answer? You gave me 19.75. Did you get oh, that? Okay, yes, please, yes, please. Good, yes. good, good. All right. Okay. So we are looking at the question here, and it says that investors expect a return of 80% per annum on the shares of company B. So the 80% is this R, right? That is the cost of what? Equity. Here they are giving me the cost of equity. Okay. 
which has recently paid dividend of 80 cents per share. Then you pause and ask yourself, it's dividend, we know, but is it D0 or D1? D0. D0 or D1? D0. 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 Please, are you following? Yes. D0. Okay. And this is projected to grow at 8% per annum forever. Mm -hmm. So you have R, you have D0, you have G. Okay. If you are a rational investor, how much will you pay for, for a share today? Remember, we have said that all the money that you are going to receive in future, if you discount it, that is how much you should pay, right? So you can go by the present value perpetuity formula, right? With growth playing out there. Okay, so let's go to the board and try to put the formula down. Now, um, Corti. Corti. Yes. Corti. Yes, sir. There is K-O-T-E-Y. Are you the person speaking? Yep. Yes, please. Okay. Now, what to give us the formula we will use in this case. We have R, we have D naught, we have G, and we are asked to find P naught. So give us the formula we will use. The same adjusted perpetuity formula, yes. Please, you said we are finding D naught. We are finding P not. We are finding the price of the security. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. D not is equal to good. D not. D not. Good. One plus D. One plus G. All over. All over. All over. R minus D. R minus G. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is zero and do you notice it's like a subscript zero. Of course, I'm using my hand to write on the screen. And that's why it becomes. Okay, great. Now, Juliet, 10, 10, 0, 7, 0, 80, 28. Okay, that is fine. Juliet, please tell us what P not, oh, sorry, P, P not was not given. D not in the question was what? In the question, what was D not? Sorry, project is again. But we want you to produce. Why, the, why was the essence of sending the thing to you? I don't want to be moving up and down like that. That's why I, I sent it to you beforehand. Um, where is it? It's 80. For sure. No, don't, I, I, I hear Mills' voice and he say it. Are you Juliet? Yes, Juliet. Do not. In the question is what? I've projected. I have to. <laughs> okay. Okay. Juliet. Oh yeah, there. Oh, there can be. Oh, there can be. Share that cut twenty now. Oh, there can be. Yes, Juliet. What was the do not in the question? For those of you who are still waiting for me to call you, you can use the simple formula I gave you to find your. Uh, uh, okay, here we are finding P not right. Yes, this is eighty. What was G in the question? Yes, King. Okay. 0.08. 0.08. Okay. And what was R in the question? Um, um Amia Ma Brefi. R. I you say R. Yes, R. A 0.18. 0.18. Now, when we have this, determining P not should not be a problem. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So P not. Sorry, P not is equal to 80. 1.08 raised to the power. 0 0.18 minus 0 0.08. Yes. yes. So, the, the final answer is 864. Who is speaking? Juliet. Juliet. Hey, yes. Baba. Uh -huh. so, is, it? <laughs> is that a final answer? Is what? 864. 
eight six four yes please eight six four yeah una woke on eight six yeah eight six four okay okay so the answer is eight six four that's correct anybody with a different answer so that we can help you come to terms with us it's eight six four okay yeah, somebody has raised their hand. Sir, um, yes. Your, your name? Sir, Chumesi. Chumesi. Sir, please, I got the 6864. Correct. Okay. But my problem is the other question. Which the of the other one, questions? The okay. principle to the first question. I'm getting 12 points. Um, oh. So, wow. Yes, please. You got 12 points. Yes. Um, my, my change of subject. Was R equals D zero uh, D not open bracket one plus G plus G four divided by now the G, G is not, not all the, that G is not part of the the fraction yes please it's not part it's not plus G uh, or uh, divided by P zero P not and what did you get? So I'm getting to a point. But the second question, did we use D not? I think it was D1, right? Yeah, D1. Yeah. Remember that the dividend there was next year's dividend. And therefore, we, we did not use D not. Okay. It's this whole thing they, that they have done and has said it's 110 in that question. They had done all this and said it is next year, so 110. So all we need to do is to simply do 110 and then pick the RNG MP. Okay, so I don't know if you were still growing the were you growing? You picked one one zero as do not right? Sure. Yes, um it's it's not the I'm talking about the lane. The, the lane one. question. Yes, hey, please. That first question. <laughs> yes. We have that second and third, and you have brought this back. Uh-huh. So, so please so you did what? the second and the third, but the first one. Okay, yeah. What work us through your solution? What did you do? The company has just paid 140 cities as a dividend. What is that? Um, D zero. D zero. Yeah, okay. D zero. So, and then it is expected to grow at twelve percent. So that's G forever. Yes, please. If you buy a share today at two thousand two hundred. Yes, please. That's a uh -huh. P0. So that's P zero is two two zero zero. Okay. Yes, sir. So that is equal to what D not, which is one forty. Yes, please. Okay. Bracket open one, one plus twelve percent zero point two. Yes. One. Zero point one two. Yes. Good. Or divided, divided by, by um, 2,200. Oh, I'm using the general formula. Oh, OK. Yes, sir. Or divided minus by G. Yeah. R minus G. Yes, sir. And G is 0 0.12. And you said you had what answer? What did you get? I'm getting 12.07. No, if you have been able to set it out correctly like that, then it's a problem with the, the, the punching. Maybe you have, you have punched something wrong. So when you, when you finish, just take your time and then and deal with that, OK? okay now, if, if it were to be that you were picking, for example, D not as D1 or R as G, then would have been able to you know, bring you back to terms with it. But you are picking the figures rightly. And so all that you are supposed to do is to simply um, take your time and then solve that question. Please, I get to the point. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Now let's look at the holding period return for three. So you write principle three, holding period return. Okay. Holding period return. Okay. All right. Let me share. I want to share the uh, screen. Okay, holding period return principle three. Holding period return. Now, okay, so here we are just simply looking at if you buy a share, we have said that when you buy a share, remember we are doing cost of equity, so our focus is on shares. If you buy a share, what are the Benefits that you get. Number one is what? Dividend. Yeah. Dividend. Dividend. Okay. And then number two is what? 
Capital gains. Capital gains. Okay. So we just simply want to express this dividend, okay, in terms of percentage. What is the percentage that I'm going to get? And then the capital, if you, if you bought at one CD, okay, and then you are selling at, and now the price is five CDs, okay, we want to determine what gain you have made on that. That's all. So the holding period return is, is, is nothing but determining the percentage of uh, return on dividend and a percentage in terms of what capital gain. So we call that one dividend yield, okay? Yield means that it is a return. Yield is always a rate. Please, are you, get, are you getting it? Yield is always a, a rate, okay? And then we have capital gain, okay? So you can see capital, capital gain yield, but it is capital gain, and we always leave it in percentages. Now, if you are asked to calculate the total holding period return, okay, or the total return, then it is simply this plus that. Simply dividend yield plus capital gains return. Please, are you getting the point? All right, so let's look at how it works. Now, the dividend yield, dividend yield. Let's say that you buy um, um, a share, okay, at um, 5,000 cities. You buy it today. You expect now. Listen. You expect dividend when at least one year from today. Is that not true? If you buy a share today, you expect dividend at least one year from today. Mm. So if you get a dividend and you want to determine what return you have made, then it is simply D1 over D0. Okay, is the dividend you expect to receive in one year divided by what the price at which you bought what the dividend. Okay, this will give you something in decimals, maybe 0 0.1 something, something. But if you multiply by 100, then it gives you the percentage, okay, to give you just the percentage. Please, are you getting the point? Hello, yes. are you getting the point? This is yes. not, not nothing difficult. Uh -huh. I bought I bought the, the share at 1,000 Ghana cities, okay? And at the end of the year, they are giving me 50 Ghana cities as dividend. I can simply tell that, oh, that is 5%. Is that okay? If you buy a, a, a share at, um, let's say, 1,000 Ghana cities, and at the end of the year, they give you 100 cities as dividend, what, what percentage have you yielded on your, on your dividend? What is the dividend yield? You buy 1,000, they give you 100 cities at the end of the year. What, 10%. What? That's 10%, simply, simply so. Okay, so use this formula and you are done. Now, let's look at the capital gain. Capital gain. If I buy something one, at one city today, and I'm able to sell at the end of the year for five cities, mm -hmm. then what is the profit I've made on it? Yes, what is the profit I've made on it? If I buy oh. something one city today, and sell at five cities at the end of the year. Profit is what? Four cities. Four cities. Four cities. And how did we get that? It was the new price, which we are saying P minus P1 minus P naught, right? Yes. If you want to express this as a percentage, then over P naught, okay, times 100. Times 100. Please, I get to the point. So it's simply, if, if I buy the thing at five cities, then it's five minus one. Sorry, I buy, I buy it at one city. I'm able to sell at five cities at the end of the year. Then it's five minus one, all over one. Okay. Then you multiply by 100 to tell you exactly what you, you are getting. All right. Okay. So that is, that, is, that is that. And the total return, the total return is all this plus that. Okay. If you have written it, can I clean it? Can I clean it? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Good. Now, so our total return, total return is simply dividend yield plus what? Capital gains. So we can write a long formula for it, or we can do it one after the other and then add, okay? 
And if you want to write a long formula for it, remember that they are both being divided by what? P naught, okay? And they are both being multiplied by 100. So we can simply say that D1 plus P1 minus P naught, all divided by P naught times 100. You can simply do that. Remember, it is D1 over P naught. You can see D1 over P naught plus P1 minus P0 over P naught times 100. Okay, so it's the same thing. Or you can do it, it's one, one, and then add. Okay, all right. Yes, go for it. Go for it, your hand is up. Go, go for it, so, your so hand is up. I would like to ask you that, so what, is there a difference between um, the cost of equity and dividend yield? Yes. The cost of equity is everything that you expect to get, the return. Dividend yield is simply the return on dividend. Remember, when you buy, when you buy, um, um, how do you call it? When you buy a share, you don't only get dividend. You get both dividend and then capital gain. So this total return is an R. It is R we are finding. Remember, it is still R. Forget about the total. It's still R. It's a return on equity. Please, I get to the point. Yes, please. Sir. <laughs> it's still cost of equity. But the difference between that cost of equity and dividend yield is that Dividend yield is just a subset of the cost of equity because when you buy a share, you don't only get dividend, you also get capital gain. I, I get into what you are saying. So when you add the two, that is when you get R, the cost of equity. Is, is it okay? Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah, yes. go ahead. Please, the dividend yield, is it D naught over P naught or is D or D1? Which one is it? D1 over P0. The reason is that if you are if you are going to buy a share today, you don't unless it is cumdiv. Okay, if your share is cumdiv, you know we have X div price and cumdiv price. X div price means that if you buy the share, okay, you are not going to get the, the next dividend payment until um, when a new dividend is announced. So let's say that I buy the share mid midway okay and the share i have bought is x div it means that the, the share that they will pay in let's say december i will not get some even though i am the shareholder let me let me put it in perspective okay are, are you okay with this formula are you okay with this formula then i'll explain x div and div. are you are you yeah, okay with this I'm okay all right let yeah, me I'm okay yeah because of the question that um our colleague asked let let me Give a simple scenario, okay. Let's say we are operating from 1st January 2020 to 31st December 2020. And we are assuming there are dates that we determine when to pay dividend and order. But let's say that we'll pay the dividend on this day. This is the dividend date. This is the day we'll pay dividend, okay? Dividend payment date. Now, I am holding the share, okay? 1st January 2020. And then I decide to sell the share, okay, to, um, let's say, Lane. Now, Lane is going to have the share because I've sold to Lane. Mid, mid, in, in between these two dates, okay, if I sell the dividend X div, okay, if I sell it at an X div price, DIV, X div price to lane. What it means is that it's excluding dividend. So the dividend that will be paid on 31st December 2020, the dividend will come to Ben, not lane. I will take the dividend. Please, are you getting the point? This dividend will come to me because yeah. I sold the shares to you, excluding the dividend for this particular year, X div. But if I sell to her cum div, it means that, sorry, it means that included in the share price is what? A dividend. So mm -hmm. that dividend they will pay that year, December, Lane would have to take that dividend. Please, are you getting the point? It's, it's nothing difficult. So all the P notes that we are finding now is what? X div. Yeah, please are, go over. We are thinking. So this is a concept in finance, okay? Yeah. When I'm selling a share to you, sometimes they can sell the share five days even before dividend is paid, five days before dividend is paid. 
Okay. So if I have sold my share to you, it means that I am no more a shareholder. Okay. If I have sold my shares to Lane, Ben has sold the shares to Lane. So who is the shareholder now? Lane. I have taken my ownership out of the company. I'm no more an owner. But I sold these shares five days before the dividend was going to be paid. So five days later, they are going to pay dividend. The question is that who, who gets the, the dividend? Is it Ben who has sold the shares or Lane who now has the shares? Who is going to get it? And that is why the concept of X div and cum div comes in. If I sell the, the shares to Lane X div, then it means that even though Lane is a shareholder today, she will not get the dividend. That is X div, excluding dividend. I've sold it to you, excluding the net X div. So I can also sell it to Lane, cum div. Cum div means that I've sold it to you. I've washed my hands off of the company. Even the next dividend, you are going to take it. That is cum div. Please, are you getting the point? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. That is just that. Um, I, I, there is a question on that, but I deliberately took it out because I felt these issues may not, may not come up. So um, if, if the revised one, they bring it in your normal tutorial session, I'll just pick one question to deal with it. That's, that's no problem. Yes, Ransford. Um, oh, uh, sorry, uh, Godfrey. Godfrey. About, I think you only said um, the dividend yield is a subset of the cost of equity. And so yes. if we calculate cost of equity, does it mean that it includes dividend yield? And yes. if not, why do we have to calculate for dividend yield even though we have a formula for the cost of equity? Which formula do you have for cost of equity? What is the formula for cost of equity? There is no, not formula for cost of equity. There are so many of them. In fact, these approaches that we have done so far, principle one, principle two, and principle three, are all ways of calculating cost of equity. But what I'm trying to say is that if, if somebody gives money to an organization through the purchase of shares, the person is expecting dividend. Okay, and capital gains. When you put those two things together, that is what the return on that is what we call cost of equity. So sometimes they will give you the return for dividend and give you the return for capital gains and tell you to calculate the cost of equity. All you need to do is to add the two and tell them that that is the cost of equity. Sometimes they will give you growth rates. They will give you dividend for next year. They will give you a price of the share. You should be able to determine the cost of equity. Okay, sometimes they will give you only the price and then the, the dividend forever. Then you should be able to determine what the cost of equity is. In all cases, we are determining R. Okay, so yes, the dividend yield is one part of the cost of equity. The other half of it is what? Is what? Capital gains. Please, are you getting the point? Yes, please. Sir. Do you understand what you are doing? Yes, sir. Now let's 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 quickly pick. Um, I wanted to do the four today, but I, it appears we can only do the three. Okay, I'll add it to tomorrow's section. Okay, so um, principle three, right? Just one question, and then we will go. You have just bought a share in O2 Limited. Okay, O2. I wanted to use your name, but I didn't know your name is. O T O O. So anyway, you just bought a share in O2 Limited, okay, for 220 cities. What is that? That's what is that? What does that statement represent? Yes, variable. What variable is that? P naught. P naught. P naught. Good. P naught. The company is expected to pay dividend of 50 CDs per share next year. What is that variable? B1. 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 B1, good. And the price is projected to reach 300 CDs by end of year. What is that? T1. P1. T1. 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 So you have P0, P1, D1. 
and they're asking you to calculate the dividend yield. So let's go back to the, the please write the figures, okay? P1 is equal to this, P0 is equal to this, D0 is equal. To, and then let's go. Let's go to the board and solve. Okay. Okay, so they said we should calculate dividend yield. Div yield, dividend yield is equal to, hold on, let me call somebody, or somebody wants to talk about offering. It's me, I'm a friend. Um, I saw a name, hold on, hold on. Makat Efia Ada, if you come and then, I got something wrong with your name, just correct me. If you had a Makat. Good. Did I get your name right? Yes. Okay. So how do we calculate the dividend yield? What's the formula? D1. D1. D1 over. Just we are looking for yeah. not the total return, but the, just the dividend, just the dividend yeah. yield. Mm -hmm. P D one over P nine. Yes. P Times what? Hundred, right? Hundred. Okay. So in, we go back to the question and then identify these things in there. Okay. So yes. So what is the dividend yield? Hold on. Yeah. Uh, okay, Makati, okay. go ahead. Uh -huh. D one is equal to what? 50. 50. P naught is equal to what? Price today is equal to what? 220 two times 100. What is the answer? Somebody else should punch. Uh, is Elon back? Who is going to buy the calculator? Mm. Maria. 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 Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Good. Give me the answer. So. What did you get? 50 over 220 by 100. In the first place, do you agree with what um, McCarthy said? Okay. Yeah, so what's 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 the what's the answer? Oh, this is the calculator punch and tell me the answer. Twenty two point seven two percent. Twenty two point seven. Hello. Seven three. Yes, go ahead. Yes, Maria. Twenty-two point seven three percent. Twenty-two point seven three percent. Okay, so that is your dividend yield. Now, um, um, oh, I want to Godfrey. Godfrey. Hello, is Godfrey here? Godfrey O two. Oh, that's not the name. Hello, Godfrey. Godfred, I see Godfred O2 here. Okay, let's move on. Maybe he's now eating. Okay, so that is the dividend yield. Okay, this is how you calculate the dividend yield. We have to calculate, um, how do you call it? Uh, capital gains, right? Capital gains. That is equal to what? Yes, capital gains. Let me find something. Okay, now if I ask you, we are almost ending. If I ask you, and then somebody's hand is up. Who is that? Mamiyama Abrefi. Yeah, I said the capital gain. Good, go ahead. It's P1 oh. minus P0 over P0 times 100. P1 minus P0 over 
P not times 100, right? Yeah. Okay. Lee? Yes, please. Good. Then what was P1 in the question? P1 was 300. 300. And P0 was? 220. 220 divided by? 220. Yes. Yeah. 220 times 100. 100. Okay, okay. Lynn, give me the final answer. The final answer was um, 36.3636. 36.36 percent, right? Is everybody getting this answer? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so now the question is that what is the total return? In this case, what are we finding? The total return is the same as what? Capital gain plus oh, dividend yield. Yes. What oh, you both said is correct. The total return is the same as the cost of equity. It is our R. It's, and it is given by simply adding the two ret the returns that you get from buying a share, which is dividend and capital gain. Please, are, are you following the analogy? Yes, sir. Okay. So... So what is our, um, our return or cost of equity? This is not college of education. This is cost of equity. Okay. Cost of equity is equal to dividend yield plus capital gain. Capital gain. Okay. And that is equal. To, what was the first answer? It was two something. What is it? 22.73. Percent. Mm -hmm. Plus. 36. Yes. So that is what? 59.09. percent are, are you following? That's our total return. Uh huh. Any question up to this point? Any question up to this point? Now you can, in, de, in determining the 59.09, you can simply say that your R is equal to D1 plus P1 minus P0, okay, all over P0 times 100. Okay, and that is, what is D1? 50 plus, see, did you say 300? 300. Right? 300. 300. When you do that, what do you get? 59.09%. Okay. Uh -huh. So this is just a combination of the first two in one simple formula. Okay. Uh -huh. But you can do one, do the other, and add. Nobody is going to punish you for anything. This is how you get to the point. Yes, sir. Are we okay? We have done three principles. The first one is a normal constant growth forever, okay? Where, where there is no growth, but the dividend is constant throughout, in which case we use the, the ordinary perpetuity formula, okay? Which is, which is simply D not or D1, because the dividend is the same. If the dividend is the same, then D not is equal to D1, and is equal to D2, and is equal to D3 forever. Is that not so? Uh -huh. So we do, D or D1, D2, anything, because it's the same. That is principle one. But where the dividend will grow, where the dividend will grow, then we are saying that our P0 is equal to D0, one plus G, R minus G. Please, are you following? Here is the same constant thing, but then um, there's growth in there, growth elements in there. And we are saying that because when you grow this one for one year, it becomes D1. We can simply say D1. R minus G is the same thing. Please, I get in the point. And then we did the third principle, which we just finished, where we look at just aggregating the dividend yield and then the capital gain. So we simply said that we can determine R by simply doing dividend yield plus capital gain. Okay, capital gain. And that we said R can simply be given as D1 plus P naught, sorry, P1 minus P naught all over what? P naught times 100. 
And if you want this d d d dividend, dividend yield, then it is simply this, okay? And if you want capital gain, then it is simply this. Please, are, are you following? Are you following? Yes, sir. Okay, so that's a summary of what we have done today. All right. So remember, at this point, our focus is only on equity. But remember, there is cost of debt too. So tomorrow we continue with cost of equity. We will do principle four and probably principle five. Then we go to the second approach, which is called what? I gave you two approaches in dealing with the cost of equity. The first one is the Gordon valuation model, which has these principles. Capital asset pricing. Yes, and then the capital asset pricing. Yes, we will take the second principle, which is the capital asset pricing or the CAPM. And then we'll be done with equity. Mm -hmm. Then we take cost of debt. We'll deal with cost of debt too. And then we'll be, we'll be fine. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Yes, yeah, please. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes, there is a hand up. Um, let me take that one and then we end the class. Colin, was that your hand? No, this was an E, 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 E. I said something. Who, please, who raised the hand up? Any question? Any question? Eugene, Esa, Jima, yes. Eugene. 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 Uh, please, sorry, it was a mistake. I'm okay. sorry. Esther. Esther. Right. Esther. Esther. Uh, yes, we, want, we, are, we are interested in what you want to say. I didn't raise my hand, though. Uh, but your no, no. microphone was on. Oh, okay, so... Um, no, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, please, you spoke about the ex dev and the home dev. Yes. Is there an instance you'll be asked in a question? And how are we going to solve that if you see that in a question? So, uh, um, at your level, at your level, I doubt. I doubt at your level. Okay. But let's say that, let's say that there's a dividend, they have announced a dividend of 160 cities. Let's say um, there is a D not of 160. Okay. And they have told you that the price is, let's say, um, 1,000. But this price is what? Kum div. If it is X div, then there's no problem. If at all that we have done is X div, all that we have done is X div, okay? Then what you have to do is that the, the price you actually have to use is P naught is equal to 1,000 minus 160. That is 840, right? So you assume that they gave you 814 the question, and then you proceed with everything we have done. Okay, now that is what you do. But at this level, uh, well, I don't know. If if we resume and then they want us to deal with Kum Dev, well, this is the only thing you have to do. But you take a question on that and, and solve, okay? That is no problem. I, at, at this level, it's not, it's not something that we, we would want to teach you. Is I okay? The understanding is important, but I don't think they would require that to teach you. Okay. Hello. Okay. Sir. Okay. Sir. That's why I didn't want to. I have a question. You know me. Question is this. Debris. All right. So that is that. Um, should I give you? Questions so that you try on your own? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay, write these questions down. Write these questions down. Okay. At the AGM of AB Limited, uh, you know AGM, Annual General Meeting. Eh? At the AGM Annual General Meeting 
of AB Limited. It was announced that a dividend, a dividend of once this this is a share. Per share has been approved by the shareholders. By the shareholders. Okay. The company's growth is growth in dividend. Company's growth in dividend is seven percent. Sir, please, it's not being out. Please, can you continue from um, one sixty uh, Ghana cities? Oh, I'm typing. Can you not see? Can you see on the screen? Sir, okay, I just please forever. The company's Company's share price is thousand eight hundred. So this calculates the cost of. Calculate the cost of equity. Okay. That's that's one question. Okay. Okay, then you can you can write this one too. Okay, you can you can write this one too. The share price of company X of company X has an initial price of an initial price of. 300 Ghana cities. The dividend that is just paid, okay. Let me let me do it this way. Uh, full stop. The expected dividend at the end of the year is eighty five cities. and has a projected end of year price projected end of year price of Two seventy cities. Okay. 
will be required to calculate calculate I dividend yield I dividend yield I I capital gain and then of course total cost of Equity. Okay. All right. Please, are, are you okay? Have you got in there? Now, you have to assume. Okay. Are you okay? Yes, sir. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So, um, see you tomorrow at one. Um, please, tomorrow. Please, so I can't see after capital gain is written something. I can't see you. The total cost of equity. Total cost of equity. Okay. Can you see now? Total cost of equity. Now tomorrow, we are going to do something that is more technical and it will require your understanding in time value of money, especially the unequal cash flows where we are giving 200 cities, 300, 400. You have to discount all of them to the present value. So go and revise that portion of your notes. Um, it's, I'm going to make it a bit more easier, but you would, you would only better appreciate it if you uh, recall the things that we did and the time value of money, especially when we are dealing with on equal cash flows. Okay. All right. So thank you very much. I will see you tomorrow at one. Bye. Welcome. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. You. Lane. Oh, I miss sir. you. Come, you small. Yes, sir, I'm here. Sir, thank you. <laughs> All right. I'm going for two other classes, so maybe they can. Okay. Um, Bye, see you sir. tomorrow. All right. Bye, sir.